Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a little bit of a different setup and I'm really excited because I transformed my little bedroom into a little studio. That means I can't actually sleep on my bed. I actually sleep in the living room. So I hope you like the new setup. I have my lights in the background and it's funny because my mic is actually on my door. Yeah, it's actually on my door, my, my closet door, because there's nowhere else to put it. So I am in this, okay? I am passionate about this, so passionate about this, and I'm actually doing this. But I digress. So we are barefaced because we're going to be putting on some makeup while I talk to you about some of my other passions, which is horror stories. Halloween is coming, so I'm so excited to be doing this. All the makeup I'll be using will be down in the description. Anything I mention, any research articles I've read, I will also be putting them down in the description. And yeah, let's just get started. For primer, I'm actually gonna use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. And honestly, I'm not sure if this is a primer, but I don't wanna use a primer and then this. I feel like it's just gonna be so heavy. This is in the shade Fair. It's weird because the shade Fair is almost a little bit darker than I would like it to be. So yeah, let's just get into the story. Today I'm going to be talking about a true story that comes from my home country, the Philippines. And not a lot of people talk about Philippine ghost stories in this space. And the thing with the Philippines is there's so many ghost stories. We literally had this book called True Philippine Ghost Stories and I was reading them when I was in grade school. I don't know if they still sell those, but those were my favorite books to read. They were like Archie comics where there's a volume one, two, three, and they would just feature a bunch of different horror stories. It's weird. I'm a little like dry. I feel like my skin is not very happy and I know why. I didn't do my skincare. <laughs> I have to say I slept with my makeup yesterday. I am so bad. I haven't done that in a while but I was just so tired. So today we're going to be talking about the demonic tombstone in a place called Malabon in the Philippines and Malabon it's basically like a city that is next to not really next to but it's near the capital city Manila which is located in the national capital area national capital region and they're famous for their heritage sites and also for their Pancit Malabon which is amazing. I'll insert a picture here because I don't know how to describe it but damn I miss it so much. I'm in Canada right now and there's a lot of Filipino foods being sold but you need to know where to go you know. So our story starts in a little barangay or like neighborhood and there is a tombstone in their cemetery that features this statue of you know how there's a statue of Saint Michael the Archangel defeating the devil? Yeah, imagine that, but in reverse. So this tombstone is owned by one Don Simeon Bernardo, and he died of a heart attack in 1934 at the age of 65. So since this tombstone shows St. Michael being defeated by the devil, it's kind of like a message telling people who see it that evil triumphs over good. So there are many people who have heard stories and rumors about the origins of this tombstone, and some believe that a dog was buried there. Others believe that the man who was buried there was a drunk. And some others believe that he just has different religious beliefs. And so the real question is, why would he do such a thing? The story goes that Don Simeon wanted to tell people that even until now, evil is still triumphing over good. And to be honest, I don't think he's wrong. I mean, you look at our world today and you can see it everywhere. You can see how evil is almost winning sometimes. And we as a society almost seem hopeless in that regard because there's just so much evil in our world. And like in Canada, for example, we found out about all the residential schools burying kids. We find out about the Catholic Church hiding their sexual misconduct. There's just so much going on. And so Don Simeon was not wrong. So a little history lesson about the Philippines. We were colonized by the Spaniards in the mid to late 1500s. And so we have a lot of Spanish influence, not only in our like food and our architecture, but also we have a lot of people who have Spanish blood. And the biggest thing they contributed to our country is Catholicism. By the way, I am loving this e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. It's so nice. It's not matte, but it's not glowy. It's like a natural finish. I really like this one. So we had a lot of Spanish influence at that time. So a few weeks after Don Simeon's death, 
his like family or his guardian found his diary and when they read his diary they realized that he has gone through so much under spanish oppression it's crazy he was literally tortured by the friars so during this time, the Spanish were still trying to colonize the Philippines completely. So they were spreading Catholicism, they were encouraging people to convert. So he actually challenged them. And of course, when you challenge some supreme force, they're gonna try to headbutt you. And so he was eventually arrested and that was not good because he was not only arrested, he was literally tortured so he was put in jail and then he was forced to work under the heat of the sun with only a bucket of water that had human excrement in it for his drink that is just that is just so bad it's not it's I, I cannot imagine going through that and I don't think torture is a good way to convert people to their religion i just think that it might backfire which in this case it did so at this point he was almost like feeling hopeless because he didn't understand what kind of god would allow somebody to go through what he's going through and i understand i mean imagine going through such pain and torture it just messes with your mind it messes with your head you feel so hopeless why would you think that there's anything good in in the world that that reminds me of the scene in game of thrones where who is that the guy who was torturing that other guy i think you know what i mean just put it on the comments but he was torturing this other guy and then he made him think that he was gonna like survive or live or escape and then in the end he was captured so he's playing mental mind games mental mind games and that was just so cruel i could barely watch it i was not happy with that scene that was one of the most heartbreaking scenes for me in game of thrones because it just shows how cruel torture is and it literally destroyed the, the guy right and so in this case don simeon was like there's there's no god and so he brought this belief to his kids as well. He made them promise him that they will not believe in God. And eventually, some of them did convert to Catholicism and some of them maintained their atheism beliefs. So although he turned away from Catholicism, it basically engulfed the whole country. So just a little tidbit about my bronzer. I'm using this Butter Glow Bronzer by Physicians Formula. It's very liquidy. I've been trying out for a couple days and I've been really enjoying it, so yeah. And so going back to the story, he basically decided to put up the statue that shows that evil will triumph over good. And when he died, that's what they did. And the reason why it's in a cage. So when I actually first saw the photos that the statue was in a cage, I got extra scared. I was like, is this like an Annabelle situation where she's locked in a case because people are not supposed to touch her or they get, um, it's like a dangerous situation. But the real reason isn't as bad as I thought. So basically a lot of people have been throwing rocks at the statue and it has been defaced already and they had to like reconstruct it. And so that's why they decided to put a protective casing that protects it. And yeah, that is the story behind the demonic tombstone in Malabon, Philippines. So what are your thoughts i definitely feel like it looks sinister especially seeing it caged up like that also i do understand why he put that up i mean it's basically a reminder to society that goodness does not always prevail it's a sad reminder but it's the reality we live in and it's definitely extra disturbing because it's a true story and it has to do with somebody being tortured that's not something that is pleasant at all in any circumstance now there are other horror stories from the philippines that are more fantastical more about forest beings like the capre which is basically a giant that lives in the trees that likes to smoke cigars i don't know where he gets those cigars but it's 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 something that i've heard people have seen we also have the manananggal we have the aswang the famous aswang which is basically like this half human half 
bad situation that feeds on babies in the womb. So there's a lot of stories that I'm really excited to share with you. And I decided to present to you these stories in this way to kind of take away from the horrorness of the stories. And I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you like to see next. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be informed when I upload. I'm trying to be more consistent with my content now and that I have a studio, no bed, but a studio. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.